Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is as follows. Lisa baked 42 biscuits for her 12 guests. If six biscuits remain uneaten, what is the average number of biscuits that her guest ate? Okay, so this is the problem. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, we'll go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, and of course, we'll solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, let's go to take one more look at the question before I show you the answer. So Lisa, uh, you know, she's very nice. She's going to bake 42 biscuits for her 12 guests. All right, so if six biscuits remain uneaten, what is the average number of biscuits that her guest her 12 guests eight. Okay, so this is not that difficult, and hopefully all of you are going to get the right answer, which of course is three. All right, now if you did this right, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face in A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of solving basic math word problems. And that's what we have right here. Now we are dealing with this term, the average. So you have to know a little bit about the average and what it is and how to calculate it. But to hopefully most of you out there found this problem pretty easy. And if you're a little bit confused, well, in a few minutes, you'll be looking like this person. So let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. Okay, so first things first. First, we have a math word problem. And always use the rule of three. In other words, read the problem at least three times before you pick up your pencil and start to write stuff on your paper. That just gives your uh, brain a chance to kick in, and you really have to kind of think about the problem, get the information absorbed in your brain, and make sure you understand the question. And the question here is, uh, so Lisa has these, uh, she cooked all these biscuits. Uh, some of the biscuits were not eaten, uh, so she has 12 guests. And the question is, what is the average number of biscuits that her guest ate. Okay, so it's going to make um, you know uh, good sense for us to understand or review the concept of uh, what the average is. So certainly we'll do this, but here's the thing. In a problem like this, it's not that difficult, but again, if you try to rush through it really quickly, you're going to make errors even if the math involved is easy. All right, so first things first, for, uh, let's go ahead and review what the average is so we understand you know, what, you know, obviously the average is and how to apply it in this problem. Because if you don't know what the average is and how to calculate it, we're going to have a tough time answering this question. So let's go ahead and review that right now. Okay, now if you didn't know uh, what the average is, and there's another fancy word for the average, it starts with an M. Do you know what it is? Is it median? No, it's not. It is the mean. Okay, now a lot of people confuse this other word, median, uh, with uh, the average because the median is also a very commonly used word. But when we're talking about the average, it's also referred to as the mean. So let's go ahead and just calculate the average of these three numbers right here, 1, 3, and 8. All right, so you can see I already did the work. And the average of uh, a set of numbers is basically we have to add up the numbers. We're going to find the sum of the numbers, and then we're going to divide by how many numbers that we, uh, that we have. So in this case, we're going to take 1, we're going to add it to 3, and 8. So 1 plus 3 plus 8. Now, how many numbers do we have? We have 1, 2, 3. So we're going to divide by the number of numbers that we have. Okay, so 1 plus 3 plus 8, which, of course, is 12. And we're going to take that 12 and divide it by 3. So our average here is 4. Okay, now, in terms of what is the average? Now, we just calculated the average, but what is it? Well, that's a bigger topic in uh, basic statistics, but basically, 
the average is something, it's what we call a measure of central tendency, okay? But the average is only one measure. There's other measures out there like the median and then there's some other fancy ones like the mode, the range. So for those of you that are interested in statistics and average, I'll give you some suggestions where you can learn more about this. But first, for, uh, first things first, first we're just trying to figure out how to calculate uh, the average and uh, of course, most of you probably already knew this, but now that we know what the average is, let's go ahead and move on to the rest of the problem. All right, so let's uh, think about how many uh, biscuits that uh, Lisa baked for her 12 guests. Oh, she's such a good cook. Uh, hopefully these biscuits are really nice, but I kind of drew out some biscuits here. Now you don't have to do this. This is just me having fun with this problem. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six uh, in this row of biscuits. So six times seven, is 42. So we're going to have seven rows right here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then of course here is our seventh row. Now, if you felt compelled to write out all these biscuits, well, that's fine, uh, but it's not necessary. I just did this just to have fun. But here is our 42 biscuits for her, our 12 guests, right? So our 12 guests here are going to eat these biscuits up. Aren't they lucky? Okay, so they're going to eat this up, but here is the deal. This part of the problem right here states that uh, six biscuits remain uneaten. So our 12 guests did not eat uh, 42 biscuits. Uh, six of them, okay, these down here uh, were just kind of left, you know, uh, all by themselves. So the guest really um, uh, ate this many biscuits. All right, so we're talking about real basic arithmetic and stuff, but, you know, if you struggle with what's going on in a problem, it doesn't hurt to come up with a quick kind of model and sketch it out. And this is where math can be fun and creative. Of course, I'm taking it to a whole new level by writing out 42 biscuits. But the rest of the problem states the following. If six biscuits remain uneaten, what is the average number of biscuits that her guest ate? So what we need to do is to calculate the actual number of biscuits that her guest ate, which of course is pretty straightforward math when we look at it like this. But uh, we didn't have to draw these biscuits out. We could just kind of think to ourselves, all right, there's 42 biscuits. Uh, six biscuits uh, remain uneaten. So uh, 42 minus 6 is 36 biscuits. So that's how many uh, biscuits the, that her 12 guests ate. All right, so they ate 36 biscuits. How many people ate them? 12 guests. And what is the question? Well, we have to go back over here. And the question states, what is the average number of biscuits that her guest ate. Now, the one thing about the average is this. Uh, some uh, people could, the average doesn't tell you that every guest ate this exact amount, okay? It's just an average, right? So we don't really know that, but uh, when we see the answer, it's gonna seem pretty obvious. All right, so 30, 36 biscuits were eaten amongst 12 guests. How many do you think on average each guest ate? Well, probably all of you already know the answer. But let's go to take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't you like the how I kind of sneak that in? Well, I definitely need your help to continue uh, to grow my channel and help as many people as I possibly can in math. I've been pretty fortunate uh, to reach a lot of people. I think right now I'm up to like 84 million views, which is kind of crazy uh, when I think about it. But hopefully I've helped a lot of people along the way. And, uh, you know, I know my views or I know my videos get watched pretty much, you know, different parts of the world. So that makes me very happy. So if you are in a in Europe or Asia or something like that, uh, where they talk about not math, but mass, which I think is very cool. Hopefully you're getting some benefit from my videos as well. But remember, math is a universal language. So, you know, algebra in the United States is pretty much algebra in Europe and in Asia. The concepts and principles are the same. But if you like my teaching style and you really want to uh, kind of learn, um, you know, in a more formal way or more comprehensive way, well, then check out my full main math courses. You'll find links to all of those in the description of this video. But in the meantime, just hit that subscribe button so I could be quiet and finish the, this problem. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward, right? So if we had 36 biscuits, right? So uh, well, actually it was 42, but these 12 guests ate 36 biscuit, biscuits. How many, uh, on average, how many biscuits did each guest eat? Well, it's going to be 36 divided by 12, which of course is three. So on average, uh, each guest ate three biscuits. 
Okay, so pretty straightforward, but let me end this on um, this video on this part, okay? Uh, the average, all right, is, and again, let me just go and write this right here. The average is the same thing as the mean. Now, when you learn math, okay, you want to apply it in your real life and to kind of understand the real world. So uh, typically, when you read the news, especially like financial news, uh, they don't use the average, you know, it, it, the average is used, but it's not used uh, as much as this word right here, which is the median, okay? These two things have separate uh, meanings, and this one right here uh, oftentimes is confused with the mean or the average. The, these two things mean uh, something entirely different. Let me give you a quick example. Let's suppose we have a uh, neighborhood and the average cost of this house in this neighborhood is $100,000, okay? So that's the average cost. So what do you think that means? Do you think that means that, okay, well, if you're going to go buy a house over here in this neighborhood, that you would expect to pay around $100,000 uh, for this house? And that's what most people would um, kind of think. But really, uh, this cannot be the case. See, this this house right here could be like $1. This could be like $5. Uh, this house can over here can maybe be fifteen dollars. Now I don't. I'm just gonna make up a number because I don't know if the average is gonna be a hundred thousand. Uh, I can do this real quick in my head, but maybe this is like uh, eight hundred thousand dollars. Okay, because eight hundred no, not eight hundred thousand, four hundred thousand. Okay, because we have four houses, so four hundred thousand. If we add all this up and then divide by four, maybe we're going to get around $100,000. So, you know, the average doesn't tell us a lot. So, you know, it tells us something, but it doesn't tell us a lot. What's better, okay, oftentimes, and what's actually the best is when you have the average and the median, but the median is something entirely different. The median uh, is going to tell us all the values. Okay, let's suppose the median home price is 250000 dollars in a uh, neighborhood. So what does that mean? Well, it means that 50% or one half of the uh, all the homes in that neighborhood are less than 250000 and half of the homes in that neighborhood are more expensive than 250000 Now, we don't know what the spread is. We don't know if this is going from like 220 to 280. That's, a, that's something called the range. So Here's the thing. In statistics, the more measures or uh, measures of central tendency, the average, the median, the range, the mode, even the standard deviation, you, this gets kind of, you know, more and more involved. Well, you know, this is all good stuff and it's, it has a lot of practical application. But, um, you know, I really wanted to stress this here, the median, because, you know, we're talking about the average here, which, of course, is the mean, because this is such a highly confused uh, part of math. And you'll see these terms everywhere, especially in the news when they talk about the median home sale or the average this or the median that. So just pay attention to that. Now, uh, let me go ahead and answer a question that I kind of uh, uh, threw out there. And that is, if you want to learn more about basic mathematics, uh, basic statistics, uh, this is really important, you know, understanding information and data. Well, I pretty much teach this in most of my main math courses at various levels whether it's pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra two, et cetera. But um, if you're interested in relearning mathematics, that you're not a math student, well then check out my math skills rebuilder course. In that course, I teach you basic math, some algebra, I teach you a lot of geometry, even some basic uh, uh, trigonometry and some probability and statistics. This is a very uh, great, uh, very, well, I think it's a great course, but it's an excellent course if you want to kind of refurbish and relearn all that math that maybe you forgot 40 years ago. But again, learning math, the more math you know, I personally think there's a lot of uh, practical value in it, okay, especially statistics and probability. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.